the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for waking us up in a right mind, Lord, with a mind and a will to serve you, Lord, to get on this Sunday school and learn more of you. Lord, bless the teacher, bless the participants, bless those that want to participate and can't. Lord, I just thank you for today. For it's the day that you have made, Lord, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And we will learn of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oh, I was trying to go into the sanctuary. And so our lesson is lesson three. And our lesson is Hulda, prophet of wisdom. And the Bible basis was found in 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, 14 through 20. Our Bible truth is that the prophetess Huldai intercedes for King Josiah. Our memory verse is, because thine heart was tender and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heard what I spoke against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, said the Lord. And that's in 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, in the 19th verse. And our lesson aim is by the end of this lesson, we will analyze the prophetess Holdai's message from God for King Josiah, reflect on Josiah's behavior after hearing the words of the book of the law and seek godly wisdom. Amen. And that is our lesson for this morning. And we are just happy to present our teacher to you this morning. And that's going to be none other than Elder Lambert. Let's say amen for Elder Lambert as he comes forth. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Why don't we go ahead and get someone to go ahead and read the uh, first uh, three, I guess, read the first uh, from 15 through 18, and then we'll uh, kind of pick it up and, and work work it that way. Uh, can I get a reader? Did you want 14 through 18 or 15 through 18? 14 through 18. I'm sorry. Thank you, sis. Okay. So, Kaya so. the priest, Akam, Akbar, Shapin, and Asiah went to hold the the prophetess, the wife of Shalem, the son of Tikvah, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. She was living in Jerusalem in the second quarter, the new part of the city, and they spoke to her. She said to them, thus say the Lord, the God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, behold, I am bringing a catastrophe on this place, Judah, and on its inhabitants, according to all the words of the book book which the king of Judah has read. Because they have abandoned, rejected me, and have burned incense to other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore, my wrath burns against this place and it will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, ye shall say this to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, regarding the words which you have heard. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, go ahead and read one more just so that we uh, finish up that content. Okay. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I said against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolation and a curse. And because you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Amen. Let's say amen for the reading and hearing of his word. Um. I want to give you, uh, you know, to kind of take us back a little bit and, and let's kind of consider what happens in the first verse uh, of this particular chapter. Um, the kingdom was divided. And uh, that's right after uh, uh, Solomon passed away, the next king came in and then they, a uh, rare bone, then the uh, kingdom divided in the northern and southern kingdom, Judah and Israel. And when we look at those kings, and I'm going to show you a picture of uh, Elder, uh, I have a little thing I need you to let me share. Hold up for a second. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, can. Yes, sir, you can. Let's see if I still have it up here. Where did it go? Let's see. Here it is. Okay. Here's a list of of the kings. And as you can see, 
of the pink area represents kings that didn't do good. The column, uh, the judgment, uh, this column right here represents Israel, I mean Judah, uh, the first column where it says kings, uh, relationship, that first column is Judah. And that's when the, the, they split up between North and Southern. And as you go through this list, you can see how many of the kings that were wicked uh, in Israel. Uh, Israel, they had no kings except for one who actually did anything right. And then down in here, they go into captivity. And here's the king that we're going to be working with today. All right. And as you can see that there was a, uh, even in Judah, there were some kings that didn't follow what God wanted them to do. So in the first uh, verse, what we find is that Josiah comes into being a king when he was eight years old. And immediately, uh, there must have been something different about uh here, let me try to get out of here. I'm trying to do too much at, uh, at one time. I just wanted you to get a look at those kings. So when we look at uh, what was going on, the kingdom was divided. They were already having issues uh, with kings. They were already having issues with following God's command. What they have done is the kings before had gone in and they had started worshiping idols. They were burning incense to idols. They were um, worshiping Baal and, and a whole bunch of other um, uh, gods. They were actually burning their own, their firstborn child, man child. They were doing all of these horrible things. And then our king steps up and all of a sudden uh, he says, listen, let's do this. Let's go through and let's start repairing the temple. Let's get the temple back together. And in doing so, they find this book. Uh, some say it was the, uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Some say it was Leviticus. They're not really sure which one it is. But uh, they find this book and they bring it to the king. And, and they begin to, uh, uh, his secretary starts to read uh, the book to him. And what he finds out is that they have done such a horrible job finding, uh, following God's word that he says, listen, that's enough is enough. I'm tired of this. Let's get things back in order. But it all started with cleaning up the temple. Let me, let me say that part again. We can't find our junk until we begin to clean up. I remember uh, being out in front of uh, Solid Rock a few years ago when I was working. So I had a lot of work stuff in, in the trunk of my car. And I remember being in my trunk of my car in, in, at the parking, in the parking lot. And I said, I'm going to take all this stuff out. And I started throwing stuff away, and then I found things that I thought I had lost. I want y'all to catch that. In my cleaning up, I found things that I lost. And that's what was going on here. There was a book, an important book. I'm going to just say it was the, uh, the book of the law, was lost. They hadn't even considered reading it. It had been stuck away in a cabinet somewhere, down in the dungeon somewhere. And the only reason why they found it is because someone said, let's repair the temple. Let's put it back in order. And once they did that, they started reading and finding out what was going on. How many of us have cleaned up our closet and found old photos and old money and, and, and things and wow, you know, old stuff that you used to have read and then you sit down and you start reading and, and memories come back and you understand what's going on. That's what was happening with uh, Josiah. He had found what was going on and he said, we have to put an end to this. And that's where our lesson picks up. So when we look at our lesson text, uh, it said that um, they went to uh, the prophetess. Now, I'm a little confused. I want you to look up a word real quick for me. For those of you who have your computers or who have a dictionary, look up the word uh, intercede. Just look up that word for me, intercede, to intercede for someone. What does that mean, to intercede? Anybody got a comment? Intercede. To, in, to intervene on behalf of someone else. Right, to intervene, to mediate, to be a, a moderator uh, between two people who are having a dispute. Now, the difference between what was going on in here, the king said, listen, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go find this prophetess and tell her to interpret 
what I've read to tell us where we are, right? And then that's uh, that's where our lesson kind of picks up. Any questions or comments before I get on? Because I'm uh, I haven't been here in a long time, and I'm a little amped up from cleaning up and getting stuff done. Any comments before I move forward? If anyone has any comments, uh, you can raise your hand at this time, and we'll be called upon. There are no hands at this moment. Okay, no hands. All right. Uh, come on, sis, read 15 and 16 for me one more time. We're going to break this down a little bit at a time. She said to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, behold, I am bringing a catastrophe on this place and on its inhabitants, according to all the words of the book, which the king of Judah has read. I want you to think about that. What was it so unique about this situation. Well, let me, let me, I don't want to get ahead of myself. When you look at just that text, and he said unto them, thus say the Lord, tell the man that sent you, right? As if she already knew what was going on. Tell the man that sent you. This is what the Lord says, right? Based on what he had read, and it's, it's like some of us, when somebody reads us the truth, when somebody comes to us and tells us the truth about ourselves, we have to do one or two things. We have to either face it or reject it. And what we'll find as we go through this lesson is that when the truth was, uh, when the truth was presented, the king accepted that truth, didn't reject it. And there is a benefit for not rejecting the truth about who we are. A lot of us walk around with this fake image about who we are. Uh, come on, I'm, I'm just going to get as close to the uh, nub as I can. Uh, a lot of us in church, we're faking the funk. We just walk in and doing, going through the processes. And, and then when pastor or, or the word hits us, we get mad at the pastor. We get mad at the word. I ain't going back to that church. We find a church that would allow us to do the sin that we're in. You know, if, if we like, we can do one or two things. We can accept it or reject it, right? And we can't get mad at the word. We can't get mad at God. We have to take this opportunity as a challenge for ourselves. Do not be afraid to hear the truth about who you are. I, I, I don't know about you, but I spend many days in the mirror looking at myself and saying, Kevin, where are you? I mean, why in the world did you do that? You know, or hearing the truth and it would cut me to the quick and I, I can't even respond to it sometimes in the, in the moment. I have to wait and reflect on it and come back. And then I have to make those adjustments. That was right. That is who I am. That is, I remember my wife said that I was a narcissist. I said, what? Like, I ain't no narcissist. And then I sat back, I went, I looked up the word narcissistic. And, and then I looked at some of my behavior. I said, oh, <laughs> I guess she right. <laughs> and I had to make some adjustments, right? I had to make some adjustments. I know I'm not the only one. Right. Uh, when I was out there in the world um, doing my, my, my stuff and, and people would tell me, you need to stop. Well, that was everybody around me was doing this. I can just continue to do that. No, it was something that I needed to change for myself and I couldn't worry about what other folks were doing. I had to be concerned myself with what God wanted me to do for me. Can we say amen? Amen. There are, you have some hands out there? Yeah, go ahead. Deacon and Smothers and Missionary Man. I wanted to comment. God bless you, um, Elder. Lambert, you are telling the truth. I wanted to comment on the verses because they were so important. You know, um, it. You know what I looked up and it said that her name meant weasel. Come on now. She was like underground. She had to be undercover because it might not have been safe for her to come out and do what she was doing and prophesize and do all that stuff. But she had God on her side, you know, and she had a gift, you know, she had the gift of prophecy. But what I liked was when she tells them, uh, you know, but she, it, and it said that, that uh, in other words, she was probably on the ground because it was for her own protection. And she was a teacher of the prophets in the school of prophets. She was held in high esteem. They, 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 they thought she, she was important. Let's say that. She Amen. had the anointing of God. And because she was a woman, and later on in the thing, it talks about the women, you know, that, that were prominent in the Bible. But she had a special gift. She was different. She could speak it. They could do it. And so she, you know, when she spoke and said, the Lord has spoken to her and said, tell the man. Mm -hmm. She didn't say tell the king. Mm-hmm. 
She made him, she broke it down. He's a mere mortal man. Tell that man that the Lord had, that, that the Lord said this. And then she goes on to tell him without no hesitation what the Lord said. And there was no fear in what, you know, she wasn't scared. She told him, she said, because of what they've done, I'm fixing to tear this place up. They fixed to get shook up, tore up, and broke up. I'm gonna break them off something. They don't know what they don't know who I am, or they're not acknowledging. And you know, he sent those men there to get the silver to pay the workmen that were building the temple. He sent them there to get the silver to and in digging and getting the silver, they he found the book of the law. Then he had to authenticate it. Often, uh, y'all say the word for me. I can't say it right. But anyway, there you go. So thank you. He had to make it be so. He had to read it. He had to make it clear. And he had to say, this book is real. Now I got to take it to the king. And I found that, you know, that God always does things in order. And I didn't see nobody um, saying to him, uh-uh, man, don't do that. Mm -mm. They knew that this was from God. That was the book of the law. Well, they say it was, you know, but um, I don't know. But I just thought it was that, that it was real, real prominent that, um, that you know, God was going to judge him. And she spoke it, and she was a woman. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the women. Amen. That, that is so true. Right? I, <laughs> that is so true. And um, Elder Lambert, I like what you brought out about, like, when God brings us a word, you know, we have to, you know, we have to accept it. We can't be running here and there like, oh, well, God gave me a word, and what do it mean? And when God is speaking directly to us, you know, it, you know, God word comes to clean to, you know, to um, add fire, put some fire under us and all of that. And him being the king, like you said, he did not follow in his father's steps. And that to me, it showed me that no matter what background or where you come from, God can still use you and don't mean that you have to follow in the steps of, you know, your parents, because his father was, you know, was an evil king or what have you and did not walk up right before God. And so that just showed me that God could use anyone, especially um, Holda, which was like a weird name that I looked up to and said weasel. But it's, And there were prophets in the land at that time. There were some very reliable prophets, you know, around that time, but God chooses who he chooses, amen? And it just so happened to be a woman and they listened to her. And so I, I like that. And and in my closing is that it's so important to um, get godly wisdom. Amen. I always say, consider the source, whoever you're going to consider their lifestyle, consider like their reputation before you start telling your business to somebody or whatever, you know, you want someone that has wisdom, but you don't want to run away from the word of God either. Like, oh no, that's the devil or whatever. You know, when the, when the word comes to convict us, we want to run here and there. So somebody can kind of comfort us and say, oh no, I don't think it means that. No, we have to use wisdom in going to certain people. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's look at, um, and I'm glad you guys are looking up names because that's one of my favorite things to do because names have meaning, right? Uh, let's look at Josiah's name. His name is whom Jehovah heals. I'm going to just let that mirror name. Who Jehovah heals. Uh, pastor was talking about this earlier in, in service and he was saying that this king is the only king that did everything that God required of a king to do. He followed it to the letter. He, he went out and he changed things. As we're going to get into our lesson, we'll see, we'll see some of that thing that uh, took place. And it's important that we have people around us that we can trust. And if you go back, I would encourage you to go back and read uh, from the first chapter through chapter, uh, chapter 20, uh, 22 and 23. Just read the whole thing so you can get the whole flavor of what this king was faced with at a young age. This wasn't no old man sitting around smoking his pipe with his legs crossed and alligator shoes. He was a young man, started off young. So consider who was around him. I want you to think about some of the folks that had your ear when you were a child. The information, the guidance that they gave you. For me, and I'm pretty sure this is pretty close to people that, uh, that are on this call, there are some people that have been in your life that taught you some positive things. And there are some other folks taught you some cool stuff, but it was all about 
some negative stuff. It's all about the street. It's all about the hustle. It's all about the game. It's all about the get over and get up, right? Where the other person was real small in the way that they spoke, uh, real delicate in the way that they delivered that message, but it was always a message of hope, prosperity, and a moral backing that cannot be shook. I don't know about you, but that happened in my life. So I had to weigh the difference between the two, as uh, Sis brought out earlier. I didn't have to go the way of the streets. I didn't have to go the way of all those guys that I thought were telling me the, the, the stuff to do that was all hard, and this is what you do, and this is how you get over it. I had to go ahead and go back and listen to that still small voice that said, this is the right thing to do. Why? Because in the end, you win. As long as I stayed on the street, I was losing. But when I came over to Jesus, I began to win. So make sure you have people around you that you can trust. Here, well, when you read up, he says that he didn't even question the people that he had doing the work. He just said, hey, I'm not even going to question what you're going to do with the finances. I'm not going to question what you're going to do with what you find. Why? Because I trust you. You're a man after my own heart. And I believe in you. I put that kind of faith in you. So consider who was in this young boy's ear to have him get to that place, right? Uh, so his name means Jehovah heals. It was time to heal a nation. I don't know, but it sure seems like we're in a time where this nation needs healing. Any questions or comments? Because I can do this all day. I well, want to hear from somebody that's out there that, that we don't normally hear from. Yeah, in the chat, um, missionary um, Ivory said, she's so glad that the Bible clearly reveals that God not only gave men the spirit of prophecy, but he also gave that gift to women. God used Miriam the prophetess in Exodus 15 and 20, Deborah the prophetess, Judges 4 and 4. Now God is using Huldah the prophetess. She was married and her husband didn't get in God's way by stopping her from doing the work of God. God is no respecter of persons, and that's in Acts 10 and 34. God is a sovereign God. He can use anyone, male and female, to accomplish his will. And I just want to read that. And also, he can use young people, as we see here um, this morning. Absolutely. Anybody else? Some folks that uh, normally don't kind of chime in. If not, we're going to go ahead and move down to verse number 20. Uh, there's a lot uh, that I want to say. All right, praise God. Somebody go ahead and read 20 through, uh, yeah, read verse number 20 for me. And then we'll. Uh... Yeah, well, let me just talk about it. It says, uh, behold. Therefore, I will gather thee unto the fa thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto the grave a uh, in peace, and thy eyes shall not see the evil which I will bring upon uh, this place. And I'll stop right there. So that's why it's important to read the whole chapter, because what we find out in between that, what he was saying was all of the calamity that was going to happen. The death, the destruction, uh, going into captivity, they were already, one, one side was already in captivity, but there was some destruction that was getting ready to happen. And he was saying, but you're not going to see that. And, you know, that's in our Sunday school lesson. When you look at our Sunday school, our, our responsive reading, it says, uh, well, yeah, it's, right there. it's not so much in our sure. responsive reading. Yes, it's over it's, in, and, maybe and, not. Uh, um, um, Psalms 51, he said, not, not Psalms, Psalms 91. He said, only with thy eyes shall I behold and see the rewards of the wicked. And here he's saying, you won't even see it. You, you're not going to see it. Uh, because why? Why was he uh, in such a position? And this is a question that at, at least five people should have an answer to. Uh, some, some of the five people who don't normally uh, respond. Why do you think, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about his character, uh, Jose, uh, Hosea's uh, character. Hosea's character. Why do you think that God would give him that kind of a message saying, you, you won't even see the destruction that's getting ready to happen? What kind of character uh, could he have had or must have had? Anyone? Elder Lambert. Yes. All right. Um, I see. I just wanted to kind of help answer this question. And uh, 
um, because it's important uh, because of Josiah's life. Josiah's life was impeccable. Uh, in fact, there was no king before him or after him that operated in the way he did. Uh, the, uh, it, so it's important to get this. Israel had, had one terrible, the, the northern kingdom was terrible. You know, they had a bunch of bad kings. And then Judah come along and they had some good kings and some bad kings, but nobody uh, carried on the, the lifestyle that Josiah did, even though he started as a youngster. And, and he grew into that position as a youngster. He was looking for what God really wanted. He was searching and preparing and getting. And so he stood fast, went to Hilda. Hilda was a strong woman. And she told him straight what's going on. Uh, but because of his life, he did not. I don't go too far in it, but just ask you a, answering your question. He lived an impeccable life before the Lord. Yeah, so the, uh, thank you, Pastor. So the question is, is is still out there. What kind of character did this man have? Where, where, did, where did he, let me rephrase, where did he get this kind of character? I mean, you know, he was eight years old when he came into the kingdom. Uh, 18 years after that is when he put all this stuff in action. Okay. So here's one thing that, that, uh, that I, 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 I'm seeing is that for him to have that kind of, in, in, our, in our lesson, it's not in the lesson, but I'm, I'm going to go to it real quick because it's important. Uh, it's important that we get this. Uh, I think it's down in verse 12, therefore, say the Lord to Israel, uh, being evil upon thee, 15, 20. He talks about, the, the, uh, when God is talking to the prophetess, he talks about the character because of your heart, because of what you've done, because you repented, because you put these actions in place, because you had a heart for God. I'm not going to allow you to see this calamity that's getting ready to come down your way because of that. I'm trying to find that because that's important. The rest of the acts of the Messiah. OK, that's the wrong chapter. Um, uh, 14. Uh, I think it's around seven because I have a second. Yeah. Here it is, uh, verse number 17, because uh, they have not, they have forsaken me and they have uh, burned idols and incense. And then he goes down to 19, the king of Judah, they shall say unto the Lord God, because here it is, verse number 19, because your heart was tender and thou has humbled thyself. So we see two things right there. His heart was tender. That means he was ready to receive. A stony heart cannot receive anything. Water runs off of it. Nothing can soak into a stony heart. But he had a tender heart to receive whatever the uh, reward that was going to come his way, reward or punishment. He was willing to accept it because he understood that he was at fault. He understood that that nation had strayed away and had done some abominable things, had done some horrible things that was so far away from what God has asked us to do. How many of us need to go through our own temples and clean out our own temples? clean out our own shelters, to clean out our own garage? How many of us have to be honest about taking, a, we call it an inventory, a personal inventory of what's really going on in my life? What's important to me? And, and those things that are important, do they line up to the will of God? Because some things that are important to Brother Lambert may not line up to the will of God. And that's, those are the things that I have to consider letting go. My heart has to be tender enough to receive that and, and to be able to make that change. So one thing we see is that he had a tender heart. The other thing that we see is that he was humble. Humility will take you a long way. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. There are some people who fake humility. And there's others who live humility. Pastor says this a lot. If you're a man, you don't have to tell nobody. They'll see it. Humility is the same thing. You don't have to fake humility. People will see how humble you are by the way you carry yourself. Humility is like a badge of honor that you don't have to put up a banner for. Your lifestyle will, will detect, uh, people will pick up your humility. So we see that he had a, uh, a humble heart, that he, he was, um, he had humility, uh, say the word, I'm all caught up now. 
All right. Uh, he was humble. Anybody else? Any other? Uh, any, any other thing? I want to exercise. You have a hand, Elder. Class. Go ahead, uh, Elder. Um, that is so good, and I'm so glad you're excited about teaching. And we should be excited when we're teaching um, the Word of God or what have you. What I want to bring out as well is that, like you said about the scriptures, and the Bible tells us to search them. You know, search them because in them we think we have eternal life. You know, so we we have to we have to really search the scriptures to see you know, how our lives line up with the word of God or how we don't line up with the word of God. And so that's why it's so important. I know pastor pushes all the time that we should be filled with the Holy Ghost so it can lead and guide us into all truth. And when we do read the word, the word will come alive um, to us. And um, what I loved about um, this uh, lesson is that, you know, he was bringing reform back to the temple, amen? Kind of like what we're doing today. <laughs> bring a reform back and, 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 and getting back to worship and, and, and all of that, you know, um, this was a young man, you know, and God used him mightily, but like you said, he had a heart for God and that's what it takes in order for us um, to do what God would have us to do is have a heart for God. Cause he could have very well went in his father's step, but when he, when, when they found, when they found that scripture, he took heed to that scripture and that's what we, need to do today is take heed to the word of God, even when we're reading it for ourselves, because this is a personal, this is a personal walk. And we need wisdom, how to go in and to come out. Amen. And we need to go to godly counsel, you know, godly people, you know, that life shows that, you know, okay, I can go to them. I don't have to worry about something being said, you know, if I go or whatever, but we can't hide from the word of God either. If God is directed directly giving us the word of God, we can't be trying to go and try to like soften the blow, so to speak, because the word of God in itself is, is kind of like how I always say, it's always offensive. The word of God is offensive all by itself. So, you know, it's not going to be easy all the time. So I just wanted to um, add that. And I just want to say that you're doing a very good job on bringing out everything about the lesson. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So anyone else? All right, that's why it's important to kind Even of smothers. You know, yes, uh, so, Pat, Elder, if I could share, you had asked a question, and I'm not sure if it was answered. I'm sorry, but the that um, you know, where did he get this character from? Uh, I think you asked that. Yes, I did. Uh, and and it, it's critically important to to Absolutely. even stop there, uh, as I heard a brother say last night, park there because. His grandfather was an evil king and his father was an evil king. Uh, so where did he get this wonderful service to the Lord, this heart for God, this desire to get rid of all of the idols? Because he surely didn't get it from the household. And uh, as was stated, uh, many of us, glory to God, have grown up in places that were not the, the best, they, you know, trouble in the home and, you know, abuse and all of those things that went on. Yet. God reached out, the Holy Ghost reached out and grabbed our hearts and began to draw us in. And uh, he was tender hearted and he was open to knowing more of the Lord. He wanted to know the truth. So no doubt somebody obviously had shared with him what had happened. And so he goes back to uh, have them clean out the temple and get that all together. And they locate the word. How many people are searching for the word? So where did he get it from? He absolutely got it from God because uh, because God had to send somebody to drop it in his spirit and his heart was open. So he received it and pursued it. Uh, as you said, and by the time eight years later, 16, he really is going forward at 20. He starts implementing that he got in answer to your question. He got it from the law because he didn't get it from mom and him. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we can, somebody got a, yeah, there you go. Was there somebody uh, else? Yes, elder. Um, yes, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Did it sound like that? <laughs> you got me so excited. You, really, you are really bringing it. And I am really so grateful that you are because it's exciting and I love Sunday school so much. But Pastor pretty much said what I wanted to say. But but what 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 got in my spirit was 
that he had all those evil kings prior to him. He was only eight years old when he became king. And by the age of 16, like pastor said, you know, he was seeking God. He was looking to find out who this God is. So the spirit of the Lord to me was always upon him and in him. And then they said he got rid of the idols when he was 20. He, was, he wasn't playing. He was, he was moving and grooving and doing things. And then when he was 26, he ordered the temple to be repaired. He had a lot of wisdom for a young man, but he had a heavy load to carry because it seemed like every king before him was evil. You, It just shows us that God could have his hand on you in the midst of an evil world. You could be there out on the street, on the street corner, doing what you're doing, and God will knock you down right there like he did <laughs> like he did Saul and and you don't know what happened to you but you know it don't work no more for you and 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 he didn't even have he didn't have that experience he just was a man of God from eight years old and some of them other kings they got um they got to be kings at 12 and all that but they they're following the evil they was following the leader they didn't have a mind and a will to serve God at all so he was really you know I believe he was born to be who he was you know and 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 that even though he was eight he already had God's will in his life and he was going to follow. He didn't follow his daddy. Most of us do. So, or his mother, they, like pastor said, they had to be some ruthless, reckless people. So I'm just grateful that you, all this is being brought out. And, and again, I'm going to be quiet because I want to hear from other people. Thank you. Is there anyone uh, else? First lady. Uh, first lady yes. had a Amen. I have enjoyed all that I have heard, and that is so true. And you know, and then just by seeing what happened to him in those times, in these times today, a lot of us grow up in homes that are not, you right. know, like they're not right. So what God did for him, he has done for many of us also. Because the household that I came from, I don't know nothing. Well, I, I knew to go to church, but I didn't know how to be in the church mm -hmm. i didn't know nothing about the word i would go to church and then leave the church and go to the joint then go back to the church so i never really knew the lord so just because someone comes up in a in a in an area does not mean that you have to be that way and a lot of us need to stop blaming our parents and our right. aunts and our mamas right. about how i was if it right. wasn't for you because once you get to be a certain age you right. get able to make your own choices right. and you can do what you want to do and so many people they come from that but they decided i don't like that and i don't want to be that so we need to stop playing the blame game right. for the choices that we make because we have the power to make the choices and, and yes it takes lord to help us to do it because the lord was there for him we not, not we may not be no prophetess or nothing but i thank god for the holy ghost who's inside of us to lead us and guide us so that we will know what is right and what is wrong so this was a very good lesson not only for him being so young to uh do what he was doing and how the lord has chose him because the, the Lord will choose anyone he wants to choose to do. And as we have a learning in the lesson all week, that he will use the people that are less likely, the ones you just would not believe that he is going to use. And that's what I love about God. And that's how I feel about myself. I feel like I was less, I shouldn't even be doing what I'm doing today. But here I am trusting in God and believing in the word. So this is a definitely a very good lesson to take, not only for him, but for those of you who feel like you are trying to be like somebody else, be you in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I just wanted to add that our environment, though we it may not be like beautiful, you know, as we're growing up, our environment don't dictate what our future, you know, holds for us. Amen. You know, and like First Lady said, we have to get rid of the excuses. Oh, I'm this way because, you know, I grew up this way, whatever. But now God has brought us into this marvelous light, filled us with the Holy Ghost. And so we have a, a new life in Christ. So there's no more excuses. And I don't downplay that your life might have been bad or whatever, but there's no excuses. God did away with all of that. He nailed all those excuses to the cross. Amen. So just take heed to his word. See godly counsel. And, and the best thing, you know, to do is like act upon God's word once he reveals it to you. Amen. 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 So um, there, there's um, something I want to say. Uh, um, Akaya, let's look at his, his name. His name means Jehovah is my portion. So we talked about who 
could have been in his ear. God is my portion. There was a person that was already there who was named that. And, and uh, uh, Hosea, uh, I'm getting his name messed up, but you, got, you, you know who I'm talking about, the king. Uh, his name meant uh, Jehovah heals. So he needed someone to speak to him to heal him. And sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, when it comes to, uh, there's, let me just quote a scripture. There's a time and a season for all things, even coming to Christ. There are some corners that Brother Lambert absolutely needed to cross. There's some alleys Brother Lambert absolutely needed to go down. There's some back roads, all though painful, were some of the things that I needed before God could perfect me to be able to use all of those experiences that I went through. Now, here's the key. It says uh, in Egypt, when Moses was there and he went to, the, to Pharaoh and he had all those frogs, and, 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 and he asked Pharaoh, so when do you want, when, you know, what you want me to do with these frogs? He said, come back tomorrow. When God reveals to, to you or to us who we are, we can't wait for tomorrow. We have to make that change right then. And let me go ahead and get down the road. I want to skip over to uh, any, any other questions or comments from some folks that we don't normally hear from. Don't be afraid to speak because this is a smorgasbord. We learn from you as much as you learn from us, and you're robbing us of the information that God has departed on you. So anything that you have to say, I know there's some people out there whose stomach is burning, whose ears are itching. They want to say something. They think it might not be the right thing. No, no such thing in Sunday school. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind. Over in 2 Kings, verse 23, it says, And the king sent and gathered all unto him, all the elders of Judea, of uh, and, and of Jerusalem. And the king went up unto the house of the Lord and all of the men of, Judea, uh, of uh, Judea and all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem uh, went, went with him and the priest and the prophets and all of the people, both small and great. And they read. So not only did he keep this information to himself, but he got everybody together. So you don't know who your life is going to influence, who your life is going to impact. Great, small, it doesn't matter. You are here for a purpose. Don't ever forget that. You are put here. God did not just jump, drop you into a garbage can just so that you can be garbage. God dropped you in some stuff that was called fertilizer so that you can grow into the flower that he sees you as. Our job is to recognize how long to stay in the can. God will reveal to us through his word, through his spirit, through his prophets, through his messengers, when it's time for us, he will reveal to us when it's time for us to make a move. And we can't be hesitant. We can't do like Pharaoh said, I'll come back tomorrow. There's a song that the whining and sing tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. You better seek the Lord today. Today should be that opportunity. And that's what uh, Hosea, Hosea did. He took the opportunity of right then. He didn't wait till tomorrow. And not only did he take it for himself, he didn't hoard it. He got everybody together and began to read the word because if the word convicted him, the word will convict others. All right. Any, any questions or comments before we go? I think um, Jermaine Rose have a hand up. God bless you, Jermaine. Um, hey, you can, God bless um, you, Brother up. Lambert. Dang hey, so goodness. I just wanted to come. Well, I wanted to say thank you for comforting me to say something. You know, like <laughs> you said, it, it was no wrong and no right answers and comments. So I just wanted to say, it might sound funny, but I want to thank God for the things that he brought me through, though. You know what I'm saying? Like the bad things, the things I had to learn from the things that's developing me into the person that I'm becoming now. So I just want to just thank God for that, you know, because they say, like, a bad home. I want to thank God for that bad home because I was learning from it. It wasn't that I was just going digging into it. I was learning from it and trying not to be of it. So me going through these trials and tribulations have been a blessing more than just a destruction, you know, because I have been – I have participated in destruction, but that still gave me the opportunity to build and learn from it. So I just want to thank God for that and, and thank you for listening. And thank you for giving me the time <laughs> to say this because it, it's been heavy on me to even say stuff like this. So 
I appreciate it, and thank you. Brother, Brother Rhodes, that's, and I know, Pat, look at Pastor smiling, look at him, look at him. <laughs> See, even in your life, man, uh, and I'm glad, this is what I'm talking about. You just blessed my heart, and I'm pretty sure you blessed some other folks' heart, just from your testimony, just from the corners that you had to go down, and, and where you are right now. You know, uh, God had put, because uh, if I remember this correctly, God had put some people in your, along your walk. <laughs> that you had an opportunity to, to listen to and, and to glean from that was a little different than what you were hearing on the other side. God will do that, but we have to be able to recognize it. And, uh, Pastor, it's all yours. Well, praise God. I, I, once again, there's so many things about this particular lesson that are, um, that are applicable to the lives of each one of us and our day and time, as a matter of fact. There's been this constant um, controversy or disagreement concerning uh, and yes, God bless you, uh, Brother Jermaine. We love you. We're proud of you. Yes. So proud of you. Um, but uh, about whether or not women can do whatever they can do and prophesy. And the Bible makes it clear. It's in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh. your sons and daughters. daughters. Glory to God. And so it's important for us to understand that women, and I think I shared this before during this lesson, but, you know, God has given, has order and he has places for each person for God doesn't make you better than anybody else doesn't make them you know somebody more spiritual or whatever God has called you and he will equip you to carry out the assignment uh, which you were called to do if you are willing and uh, you get yourself ready to do what God called you to do Hulda uh, as I think I'm sure I heard the superintendent say was not the only prophet in town. That was not the only prophet he could have gone to. Jeremiah and others were in that area and he could have gone to them, but God had him go to Hilda. Now Hilda was very sharp with him. He, she was very direct with him, glory to God. And she let him know, uh, listen, young man, this is what the Lord says and began, she told him. And it was a tough message. And, and that was the destruction of the people, destruction of those folks. That was a tough message uh, to share with the king. He could have took her head, glory to God, but instead his heart was so. And when uh, God acknowledged that because his heart was so, he, the destruction would come, but not in his lifetime the destruction would come and, but he would go down in peace. Elder Lambert, you talked about that around, around verse number 19. He was going to go to his fathers in peace. The destruction came after he was placed in the grave. And so it is critically important for each one of us to make sure that we are walking up right before the Lord. As was forestated, he, there was nobody before or after like Josiah. Uh, nobody before or after. And I was blown away because God can reach and touch the hearts of anybody and everybody. Nobody was his example. Nobody that we know um, was his example of righteousness in terms of how he was raised. Uh, he was eight years old. So, uh, and his daddy was a, was a mess and his granddaddy uh, Manasseh was a mess. Glory to God. So uh, where, where did he get this? Well, God placed it on his heart. And as First Lady was talking about it as well, God will reach out and grab you and send folks to minister to you, say stuff to you. I tell folks often, there was a lady that worked at the airlines and she would come through the store I worked at and she would come through all the time like she was coming to get some groceries, but she'd be talking to me about the Lord, talking to me about the Lord. And when I got saved, I, one of the first pe people I called was her to say, hey, Phyllis, I'm saved. Glory to God. It is important for us to, to have our hearts ready, hearts tender. His heart was receptive to what God wanted because his heart was receptive or tender as the Bible uh, characterized it. He was receptive and God filled it. Are you receptive now? to the will of the Lord. You have to ask yourself, are you receptive? Are you really willing to do what God called you to do? Because it will take you maybe to a place that's not very popular. It'll take you to a place, glory to God, sometimes where you got to walk along. Glory. Sometimes it'll take you to a place where you're doing something totally different than your personality is. God will take you to a place that uh, will bless his people, bless him, uh, honor him. And so are we receptive to the change? 
have we been so caught up into what we're going to do? No, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do this thing. Now, we don't say I'm going to do my own thing because that wouldn't sound very saintly, although that's what we think. And that's, <laughs> that's how we behave. You know, don't you upset me. You upset me. I'm not going. Well, if you say that to me, I'm not going, whatever it is. Amen. And so we have to understand uh, that Hilda did not worry about that. She said what could have upset the king. Uh, and she said it because God said it. All right. Uh, and it's important for us. Every one of us in here has God's call on your life. Every one of you has God's call on your life. Will you do what God through the Holy Ghost is making clear to you for you to do? He's talking to each one of us. None of us are exempt from it hearing from this Holy Ghost, none of us. He loves all of us. And because of that, he's going to share with you to do some things that will maybe take you out of your comfort zone. But your blessing is generally on the outside of your comfort zone, all right? You're doing the things that God has called you to do generally stretches you outside of your comfort zone. I don't even have to get an amen. Doesn't really matter, I'm gonna say it anyway. That's the way it goes down. If you could do it on your own, you would have already done it. You need God's help to go outside of what you, who you are, so that you can please God and minister to the people that God is speaking to through you. So God bless.